trying to get a few things set up here hang on just a little bit sound uh, uh what no sound or some sound or you don't hear anything i guess is the question mr landfill for you because i'm seeing oh sound good okay because i was seeing things hey by the way can you hear music or not just curious i'm not sure i've thrown in music let me see if i can i'm still working on my obs here let me see if i have uh, audio output capture, no music. Let's see if we can do something here. I might be able to do that. Um, uh, let's see, Mac sound output. And let's create a new one. And let's say that is our, ooh, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Let's see. I think I have to load ground control, but I don't think I can. Yeah, I'm not sure how to set the Mac. Hey, Neil, how are you? Um, I did post in the Discord that I was going to do this, uh, so it kind of is a surprise. Let me, I'm sitting here seeing if I can. I don't think I can. I'm going to have to research this. I don't know that I can push my audio from my Mac through OBS. I'm sure I can. I've just not done it and I'm not sure how to do it right now. So let me go ahead and delete this. Uh, da, 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 that one is here and I will just kill that. Let me remove. I hear I hear music, but I'm sure my mic is filtering that out. But let me go ahead. Uh, one thing I do need to take care of is I need to capture uh, I need to get my chat over here. You can see my chat right there isn't working. So hang on. I'm not sure why that did not save that from the last live stream, though. That is pretty odd. Let me go back over here. Click here. Uh, I need to go here, go live. All right, and then I need to go make this live, and then I've got to grab that pop-out chat right there. There we go, and this should, yeah, not sure. I guess it creates a different chat room every time. That's just odd, and maybe there's a way that I can do that a different way. Let me see if I can fix this. All right, chat should pop up here in just a second. Let's see. There we go. Now we're now we're in good shape. Uh, I think there's a plugin that works somehow with OBS where this is this is actually created as a web view. So that's why that's there. Um, so not great. I do have another computer where you can't see me pointing. I have another computer. Where am I? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's actually that way. Not that it matters. I have another computer over here where uh, I am uh, checking and seeing how many folks we have. We have about three of you hanging out. Good to have you. There we go. Uh, let's see. Who do we have in here? We have... Uh, Neil's with us. Jamie is popping in from Louisville. So spending uh, Dad's Day in Louisville. This is Father's Day in the United States. To those of you who are not in the United States, let me know if you celebrate. We are going to thumbs up everyone. There you go. Mr. Landfill is doing his work. Thank you, Mr. Landfill. Appreciate that. I should really use the Discord more. I Yeah, Neil, I just kind of put things there. It's handy. It's uh, It's one of the perks, obviously of uh, becoming a member of the channel. So that's kind of nice. And you get uh, uh, get the notification. So I'm in my other studio here. I was working, uh, hopefully, hey, did you all, all of you who are online, all three or four of you, <laughs> had, did you get a chance to see my 10 tips for the C64? If you did, let me know what you thought. Uh, but what we're going to do today, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. I'm just kind of curious whether you saw it or not. But what I want to do today is we I think we want to come back to this little guy right here and see what we can do. Now, I've got some stuff here. Uh, we're going to see if we can get, and I've got a real keyboard here. We may re resort to that in this. And I'm also going to see if we can capture this video out into OBS too so that you can see that. Uh, but the plan is, what, what do I have a little, looks like I have a little streak or something, right? Oh, that's weird. Oh, check that out. It's some kind of shadow. See that little, what looks like a scratch right there? It's actually some kind of reflection of something off there, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, we're going to come back to that today. And uh, let me go ahead and fire it on. Let me turn it on here. Uh, it's over here, if I remember. There we go. Turn that on. And uh, we're going to see if we can play with 
our retro package retro arch on there and see if we can get uh get that a little bit further down the road that's my plan today i have started another video this week or this weekend rather and started on that over there and uh just a little hint it is um coming back to combian 64. so that's my little hint to those of you who are here and trying to do something kind of unique uh, we'll see if it turns out i i'm already disappointed in something I needed for that, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've got this thing fired up. If you remember, uh, you know, I probably am gonna need a mouse for this too, because if I use a keyboard, then this is gonna go away. All right, we'll see how far we get. First thing I wanna do though, is I want to see if we can use this capture card, and I'm gonna need a USB cable. I did not grab a USB cable. Let me grab a USB cable. I'm grabbing everything but a USB cable. What in the world? Yeah, that works. There we go. Okay, and my, cable, my, my camera seems to be following, so that's doing a good job. There we go. That's pretty cool. Very nice. All right. Excellent. Right there. Okay, so here's our HDMI cable right here. Let me go ahead, and uh, what I want to do is see if we can get some kind of signal out. There is a external HDMI over here, and we're going to see if we can use that to get this screen up here on OBS so that you don't have this weird angle. All right, that's plugged in, and then we're going to plug in my capture card right here. We're going to plug this USB-C into a little dock I have over here on my Mac. Get rid of that. So this is a little bit like uh, learning how the sausage is made, folks. What a, what a mess I got over here. Uh oh, it just went away when I plugged it in. <laughs> let's let's hope something comes back here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, oh there we go. All right. Now, Mislov, how you doing, man? Good to have you here. Uh, Mislov, hopefully you got the Discord message that said I was going to be live. So this is it's not a surprise. You granted you only had about three hours, but you know. Hmm. Um, so it's over here. I must restart my computer for these uh, changes to apply. So I'm going to go ahead and restart that just to see if it needs to do something. So we'll let that go ahead and do what it needs to do over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new scene over here in OBS. Let me go ahead and do that. Uh, let's call this my, uh, oh, we'll call this my retro arch. And you can't see what I'm doing. I'm, I apologize. Uh, that just took you completely off screen because uh, I have moved on to trying to create this. So hang on there. Uh, I'm going to move. Uh, the first thing I can do, though, is I can bring my webcam over from this view right here. So let me just copy that. That one is my picture in picture. So let me copy. Come down here to RetroArch. Let's paste that. And that should give me, yep, me back up there. So that's good right there. And then um, let's see if we can create another. That will be a video capture device. And we're going to create a new one. This is the, uh, we will call this Retro Arch. Uh, no, we can't call it that because then that's the same as the scene. So this needs to be, uh, let's call this CyberMed. CyberMed. All right. And again, you can't really see what I'm doing. Apologies. My device is the USB 3.0 capture. There it is. Click OK. Now I can move some things around. All right, there you go. And now you can see it's a little, uh, because it's a four by three, it's being stretched out here. Let me go ahead and 
let's not stretch it out because that's a little strange but let's go ahead and make that four by three uh, I wonder how I do that um, it may be the capture device is just stretching it let's see if there's some way to fix that looks like I don't see a way to modify that let me see if there is because I can't pull this way because it just makes it smaller so that's not working. Um, I think that's the thing with these capture devices. You really don't get, let's see if there's a scaling, something for scaling. Let's see if there's some way I can maybe do bilinear. You know, that didn't work. Um, let's disable. Don't think guys, I'm gonna be able to make that a four by three. Uh, what are you guys talking about? Uh, let's see. Um, let me get caught. Let me, let me look at, uh, oh, they're scaling. Let me see the preview scaling. Let's see if there's something there. Canvas scale to window. Maybe that, nope, that's the same thing. Uh, yeah, there doesn't be a, I don't seem to have a way, I think it's because of this capture device. There's no way to change this to a four by three aspect ratio. So I guess we're just stuck with that for right now. Now I just still have both views. So let me go ahead and move this up. So I can go back and forth between here and here. So at least you can see that a little bit closer. Um, let's see. Uh, thumbs up, everybody. We talked about that. Uh, I should really use the Discord more. Okay, we talked about that. Uh, Mislav popped in. Uh, Mislav is uh, yoing Jamie, which is good. Jamie's hack shack. Who won at Road America? Oh, you guys keeping up with that? Okay. Just a quick uh, peek. Uh, oh, it's hey Xander. It is 10 p.m. there. Yeah, it's a little later here. Sorry about that, my friend. Usually two o'clock, but Xander, I'm just kind of hanging out. <laughs> I want to sleep soon. You know, I kind of want to sleep soon too. Uh, I do not know. I was keeping an eye on the NASCAR backyard. Got it. And uh, there. So, um, I could, I guess I could do something like this. Well, that's still going to be kind of a weird, let me go ahead and do something though. So we have chat on the screen while we're doing this, uh, cause I can bring over the chat from the other view here. Uh, let me copy that. Um, actually I have to duplicate that. I think. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I don't have a way to duplicate that. Interesting. I'm trying to uh, copy my chat over, which I know you guys can't. You have no earthly idea what I'm doing. I get it. Uh, I'm, oh, there it is. Copy. Let's see if that works then. And then go here and let's go ahead and paste the reference. And uh, maybe we can move this down here. This way we can see our chat together. And I'll move this little guy right here. That's better than nothing. So at least we have everything we need uh, while I'm working on this screen right here. Because what we want to do is see if we can get Retro Arch. First of all, a couple of things. I want to get Retro Arch to start as soon as I boot Windows. That's one thing I'd like to do. Uh, and then I'd like to start and configure a little bit. Now, I don't remember. Okay, I know I've got some Windows guys in here. Uh, so if you remember quickly, without me having to do a bunch of research, how do I get, let me lock these Windows down. How do I get um, software to load automatically at Windows boot? So right now, if I come up here, let's go ahead and load this. I feel like I need something up here. I don't know what that is, but I just feel like I need something up here. So RetroArch definitely takes a while to load. Okay, the other thing I want to do is we are going to go ahead and plug in this USB joystick right here. This is uh this is the joystick for the C64. You know what? I don't now that I think about it, I probably should not use this because if I configure everything properly, um I can have more button control. And this only has four buttons. I'm gonna I'm not gonna use this. I changed my mind. I have changed my mind. Now what I have to do is remember where that Logitech controller is, and I think I remember. Hold on.
Luckily, I used these controllers recently for a the last video I was doing. So, uh, so that's why I have this handy, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and plug this in right here. You probably saw this device make an appearance in my most recent video. By the way, this does not work with DC64. I do not understand why it doesn't, but it does not. So, looks like I got a warning. Are you all getting... Looks like one of the current stream bitrate is lower than... That's interesting. I got, it looks like I might be getting some errors. I don't know if you all are getting that or not. So, uh, in either the search box or the run dialog box, type msconfig and press enter. Thank you, Ms. Lob. I will work on that. This is why it's great to have some Windows folks in here. Uh, I'm also going to want to run full screen. Hopefully that's an option too, but we'll see that. That could be in here. Let me go ahead and plug this in to USB somewhere. Here's one. Is that one? Yeah, here's one. All right, that's plugged in. Now, just out of curiosity, it says installing device driver. There we go. You can see that here. Let me go back to this view. Oh, you know what I could do? This is going to be kind of odd, but I'm going to do it anyway so that you all have it. Uh, let me go ahead and do a webcam. Let me do, let's see, workbench. Let's copy this one. And let's paste a reference right here. Oh, that's not good. Let's go ahead and do this. And I'm going to pull this down here. There we go. And let's go ahead and... Oh, that's kind of cool. There we go. Now we're just now we just got one little area. We've got more things up here. Uh, that way you can at least see what's going on here, right? Um, looks like. Let's see if maybe I need to do this in the digital mode. I don't have anything. Let's try and restart this and see if that helps. There we go. I guess I could have just hit restart retro arch right there. That probably would have done it too. All right, let's see what you guys are telling me. And uh, in either search, okay. Uh, the checkboxes to the left of each program name indicate if it, okay, good, good, good. Select the start button and scroll to find an app you want to run at startup. Okay, means the app can't run at startup. Da, 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 da. Oh, you guys have some good information. Excellent. Uh, it looks like I have somehow locked it up retro arch there we go now it's clear so let's go ahead and uh let's just try that first so you guys are saying come over here go here type ms config there it is ms config enter all right there we go and then uh, i assume we go to start up here Right there, okay, and uh, let's see. Oh wait, or what did you guys say? Um, you know, to, to, to enter system, we can click the startup tab. Okay, I'm in the startup tab, okay. The checkbox is to the left of each program indicate if it runs on startup, all right. Uh, once you've changed the selections, click the apply button. So how do I enable or how do I add Looks like uh, I don't want this running, so that's not running. That's good. That's good. How do I get an item in there? Can I right click and I'm not seeing that. Um, ooh, let's see. So I see startup. How do, uh, can I can I drag something in there? Does, does that work? That doesn't work. Let's see. Maybe I missed something. What'd you guys say? Select the start button and scroll to find the app you want to run at startup. Right click the app, select more, and then open file window. Okay, this opens where the shortcut tries Xander's way. Okay, I'm working on it. Uh, start. Okay, so here, right click. That started. I did not right click because I don't have a mouse. Let's try this again. Let's come here, right here. Let's, there we go. And then you said, Xander, select start button, scroll, run it, uh, right click the app, select more. Okay. Uh, I do not have a more. I have run it as administrator, pen to task, pen to task, I have properties. Um, 
it means the app can't da, 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 right click in the short i tried to i uh i tried that too let's see Let's see, here we go. Open, troubleshooting, run as administrator, pin the taskbar. I feel like maybe we're dealing with an older version of Windows here, guys, uh, and things just aren't. There's pin the start menu, run as administrator, file, troubleshooting, properties. If I go to properties, um, I don't see anything there. Yeah, not seeing it there. Let me try something though. Um, Huh. Uh, I forgot when seven. Yeah, right click in the shortcut on the desktop, open file location, context menu, open file location, right click desktop icon, context, open file location. All right, all right. So here we go. So we're going to try that. All right, got that one. Um, context menu. Uh, well, I don't have that. Open file location. I do have open file location. There we go. We can do that. All right. There's retro arch. Is that uh, we're suggesting maybe I can just pop that into the. Go ahead and pull this over here. There we go. There's retro arch. Uh, right click. Uh, let's see. Open oh, no, the third from above. Got it. Um, this is really hard, isn't it? When we're we got this little uh delay right here. You were hover, hover it, man. Got it. Uh so then we have what happens if we right click here? There, oh, there's got to be an easy way than this just to get something to run at startup. I want that. Where's my, what happened to my MS config? What in the world? Let's see. Aren't these uh, these uh, uh, ad hoc live streams just uh, fun? Let's see if we can figure this out. There it is. All right, so let's open that up. Start up. And can I drag this in there maybe? I cannot. You know what, maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. Maybe there's an option in here just to do that. And why isn't this thing working? My joystick is not working. There we go, say status. Searching Windows update, uh-oh. We know for a fact that Windows Update isn't working. <laughs> auto exec. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jamie, for the auto exec bat. Ugh. This love says there is a place here that may uh, help me out. Let me check and see what that says. Let me pull this up. Get this link. The wrench comes through again. Uh, go to site. Yep. 
Okay, let's see what they say. Now, I think I can show you what I'm looking at here. Let me go to my Safari and uh, Safari and let's do not the win you, menu bar, but I should be able to, let's see, where is it? Safari, there we go. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, it's nice for the window, uh, the, uh, start all programs, scroll down the startup folder, right click and open. Oh, you know what? I remember that. Okay. This, this is ready to use. That's good. Uh, I'm going to do this without looking. So go here and start up. There it is. I found it. Right click and open. Okay. All right. So here's what we have. Let me go back over here uh, based on what uh, this seems to be working. So I have, uh, this is the startup. So I should be able to put a shortcut in here. And it should work, right? Uh, so let's see if we can drag this guy in here. All right, that worked. And uh, I really want that back where it was. Um, let's do a copy. Let's come back over here. And let's paste that shortcut. Okay, so there we go. Uh, now it should when it boots up. Okay, so now let's go in and see if we can get some things done in here. I do wish, oh, there it is, it's working now. So what I mean by it's working is this is working. Nice. Yeah, so we can use our joystick now to move around. Let's see if we have some things in settings here uh, before I, uh, the other thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna start it in full screen. I don't wanna have to come back in. Let's see if there's some way, uh, there's default settings for configuration files. Let's see what we have here. Uh, save configuration on quit, I want that. Uh, yeah, I want all those on. see back there we go let's see if we have some user interface let's see if we have menu visibility let's see uh what's let's see what's going i thought the um i thought that no this does not have linux on it because i could not get the bios to let me boot from the USB. So we are still, I'm just gonna, I just thought, I'm just gonna leave Windows 7 on it. Uh, RetroArch has a version for uh, version seven of Windows. It's the latest version of RetroArch. And I just thought I'd leave it on there. So it's gonna be easy and uh, fun if I just do it that way. Let's see, how do I make a program run start of Windows 7, hold the Windows and the R on the keyboard and run dialogues shell startup. And I think we're, we're gonna see if this works. This should do it. Yeah, put the shortcut in that folder, which is what we did. Yeah, this was arduous for sure. Got it. Uh, okay, so let's see. I'm, I'm just going to go through some settings here. Show drivers, latency. I don't want any of that. I'm looking to see if I can. You know what? The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Window. Toggle desktop menu. Full screen. Here we go. Let's go ahead and do that. Well, that didn't work. Oh, maybe it is working. It's just... This is kind of painful. Let's see. Jamie says uh, video settings in the GUI video. Use full screen mode or you can run from the command line with dash F. Um, Sixteen inch video settings in the GUI video. Use full screen mode. Okay. If I, if I can get this to it's locked up. Man, this is this is not good. Why did it lock up? Looks like there's a bunch too many. Let me close. It looks like I accidentally opened this thing like four or five different times. Hold on. Let's just do this. All right, we are going to we're going to try something here. Let me go ahead and close all of this. Uh, okay, don't show this again. Uh, okay, that's good. Um, let's go ahead and close this right here. 
All right, I'm going to load this up and try that. Let's see. Video use full screen mode. Let's see. Main settings. Oh, here's video. This is videos. Video. Full screen mode. There we go. Starting full screen mode. Now we're talking. If I can select it. Yep, oh, still still spinning. Holy cow, every time I choose full screen mode, it starts spinning on me. I think we're gonna have to reboot. I think I had uh, some 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 issue here. So let me go ahead and cancel this. And let's go ahead and just reboot. We'll see how it goes. All right. I know Windows can't stand it, man. It is not. If I could get Linux on there, I would much prefer it. But uh, for now, this will work. We'll see how it goes. It's kind of nice. I can see what the uh, the delay is over here because I'm running. I'm seeing the view that you all are seeing. So that's kind of nice. All right, it started automatically. That's good. All right, good, 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 good. All right, so it did start the software automatically, RetroArch. Let's see if we can get this back over here. Here's our video. Uh, full screen mode. Here we go again. Let's turn windowed off. Turn that. Oh, come on. It will not turn on. That is weird. Every time I choose full screen mode, it locks up. What in the world? Why is it locking up on full screen mode? I do not understand this. That is so odd. Kill it and try it with the argument. Um, do I put that in the properties, Jamie? Do I right click on that? I that um, yeah, let's yeah, I think you're right. Let's try that. Edit the shortcut. That's what I thought. Okay, so let me uh, let me let's try it here first. Let's go to properties, and we'll do this and dash. F, was that right? Did you say dash F? I think it was, right? Dash F for full screen. Uh, let me see if I can find it in chat. Yep, dad, add, uh, got it. Try long, okay. So let's go ahead and say apply. If this works, then I'll edit the shortcut in the startup. Um, we'll see if that works. All right, let's try this. There we go. That's it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit. Oh, how do I get out of here? Oh, quit RetroArch. I'm going to exit out of here, and then I'm going to go change the startup um, shortcut to add that. All right, so here we go. Let me go ahead and quit. Oops. Hey, we are, we are getting there now. Let's get that out of there. Or not. Uh oh, we're spinning again. We've got something going on here because it's just spinning anytime I do anything. So that worked, but it's not letting me change anything. I can't even quit now. So I wonder what's going on there. That's depressing because that looks really good, by the way. Hmm. I could let it just kind of do its thing for a few minutes. Alt F4. Yeah, that might work. Um, where's Alt F? Yeah, so it's just 
Pong. Ugh. Uh, then you have to change the window. Let's see. Then you have to change the window's boot animation. Well, hell, I wish I could, but I can't even get this sucker to exit at this point. So I can do the old start task manager, I guess. Not responding. Wonder what's going on there. That's just disappointing. It's good to know Windows is checking for a solution to the problem. All right, let me just go ahead while I'm in here. Let's go back to. Okay, so we'll take that and we'll do dash F. So at least we've got that. Continue. And OK. Hey, what if um, you think maybe I needed to run as, I shouldn't need to run this application as administrator, should I? Just out of curiosity, let me see what happens, see if it still locks up. All right, so uh, here we go. Here's uh, some things. NetPlay, main menu, load core. Let's see if we can load arcade, download a core. It's fetching our core list, 52%. All right, here we go. Let's, let's go ahead and try something. While it's working, you don't... Yeah, I, I wouldn't think so either, but so far it seems to be not locking up. So we're, we're going to go with that first. Let's pick, um, let's do Stella. Do we want to do, I'm trying to think what I have available that I can easily get to. We're probably going to have to download something and drop it in there. Uh, let's do, oh, wait a minute. I've got some, hold on. I may have something here. Let me see. I think, uh, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I have a nice collection of C64 software on this little USB right here. So we'll try and move some of that over. So let's see if we can find the Commodore 64. Oh gosh, keep hitting that with my knee. Sorry about that guys. Uh, Commodore 64. We have fast accurate. Oh, ooh, which one of these do I choose? That's, uh, mm, let's do super CPU. I don't want that. Let's do, let's try this one. All right, it's downloading it. So that one's in. So we'll start there. And let's load that up and see what happens here. Okay, so now what I've got to do is, let's see how we... Now I've got to plug this in. I hope I have another, oh goodness, I'm running running short on USB ports here. Uh-oh, <laughs> I am out of USB ports. I'm gonna have to unplug my joystick because that is a network port there. Let's try, uh, what are you guys, what are you guys up to? Say, how much RAM does this thing have? It says four gig uh, is what it has. Uh, so it should be okay with what we're doing. 
uh, in that case, you just right click uh, on the shortcut and start up run uh, run as admin. Yeah, I wonder, can you run as admin in the, hello, hello, over here. My, my, come on, there we go. Um, can you run as admin? Is there a, a uh, switch for that on the, the um, startup? Gosh, a shortcut, I cannot think of anything. Uh, let's see if we can. Yeah, hey, just quit. Let's see what happens. It just the this whole screen went black. You think quit shut down the whole? Oh no, there it is. Okay, I see it now. I was wondering if quit shut down the whole machine. This is not a good experience. I think I'm back to the idea that one of you had to rip out the SSD, attach that to something else, install Linux on there and pop it back in there. Um, but I mean, this, it's just, this thing just keeps locking up. I mean, I can't even, we're back to control alt delete. I guess I could try a reinstall. All right, let's see if we can figure out where to put the ROMs here. I'm gonna unplug my joystick, plug in a USB. And somewhere in here is, man, Windows is just so awkward for me anymore. I cannot believe at one point I knew what I was doing in Windows. Let's see. Um, local disk, RetroArch. Somewhere in here, there's a place for the ROMs, right? Let's just do a quick search. Google, where do I place ROMs in RetroArch on Windows? Home folder and place your game files there. Head to the main menu, load content, locate the file. Okay, so I can just basically put them anywhere it looks like. All right. Let's try that. So let's go to our... Users, uh, user, you know, I don't even really have an account on here, so I'm not sure. Let's just go ahead and uh, try this. Um, folder, and we'll call this, uh, oh, retro. Arch, and we'll double click on that. All right, and then we'll pull up my thumb drive here. I had really forgotten how slow this stuff was. Oh, what is that? Just open it. Uh, I wonder if... Why isn't that loading? There it is right there. Okay. There we go. All right. Games. 
Let's grab a couple here. Um, ooh, I think I should be able to do that one. I don't think it does tap files, right? There's Turrican. Let's see if we can get that one on there. That's two discs. That, that one could be a little tricky. Let's not do that. Let's just pull up this one right now. Copy that over. And if I remember, it likes this name for specific, likes a certain folder name for, for specific emulators. So let's drag, drag this one over and see what happens. Okay, so then let's reload RetroArch and we'll see how far we get again. Hey, see you, Xander, get some sleep because uh, I'm putting you to sleep, I am sure. These uh these ad hocs are really kind of dry and boring. I apologize, guys, but this is just kind of just so I share and hang out with you and see how things are going. Got a few more minutes myself, and I'm probably gonna get out of here myself. I will this one won't stay online, but good to have some of you here. Okay, so now I need to eject the oh boy. I didn't do that, and now I've got to eject and holy smokes. Well, I will just and I didn't have that in there. Oh boy. Okay, well, I have botched that at Ultra. Let's see. Uh, let's get out of here. Yeah, this is this is kind of bad. I may try and reinstall this. I'm not sure if I kept the install file though. All right, so let's eject this disk. There we go. Let's plug our joystick back in. There we go. And let's reload. And we'll see how this goes. Looks like I need to make some setting changes too to my stream. Um, cannot do that though while I'm streaming. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Now we want to load content. Um, we want to start a directory and it's under users, user, retro arch, and there. Okay, so I've done that. And I think it locked up again. I think we are at an impasse here, guys. This is just, it's just, it's not doing anything. Anytime I try, anytime I try and do anything, it locks up. So I think we are at a completely different experience with this particular device. I think we are going, because Windows is not working on here, period. Now, maybe it's because we couldn't update Windows and we don't have the latest version that Windows was available seven by that time. So I think the next step for me is I'm just going to start from scratch. We're going to have to wipe this. Somehow I'm going to have to break this open, get inside, see if there's an SSD in there. Uh, the other thing I could do, I could check to see if, I don't know, can I, can I hack the BIOS so that I can boot from a USB? That's the other thing I was wondering. Uh, yeah, this is, this is just locked up hard. Yep. 
Can I control? Can I control alt delete? I can still do that. So let's close the program. Cancel that. So let me show you what the BIOS looks like on the, although I don't know if it's going to mirror the BIOS. We'll, we'll check and see. It might. Let's go ahead and uh, let me show you what, what I'm dealing with on the BIOS here. Uh, first of all, let me grab, let me grab something. So one of these, or maybe not, got a bunch of USB disks, but I don't remember which one. Hey, Landfill, I, I get it. So yeah, thanks for popping in early and uh, joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, uh, no, don't. You'll just brick it and then it's <laughs> goodbye. Uh, yeah, maybe so. Um, well, I don't know. I think, uh, I think I'm ready to open this thing up though and see what's inside though. So I think I'm going to do that. If semi standard and based on a standard mo motherboard could flash a new BIOS possibly if needed outside. Yeah. So here's, let me just show you guys what the BIOS looks like. Let me come back over here. So they can show you what's going on. We are going to reboot. So here's the bio. It's an inside H2O setup utility. Uh, but if I go to boot and I go to legacy boot operations, it only lets me boot to the Kingston RBU that's inside. Now, interestingly, I have not researched that. Let's see what that is. Uh, Kingston RBU dot S H S. I'm going to do 450 and call it a day there and see what we get. Looks like this is a 64 gigabyte. Oh, that's interesting. It's a half, oh, it's a SATA drive. So I think I have, I think, I, oh, 12, but I think I can, I'm pretty sure I have a SATA to USB converter somewhere. So that might, it, that's pretty interesting. It's a half slim SSD. Look at that thing, guys. That's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Uh, you couldn't see that, could you? Let me show you what that thing looked like. Check it out. It's a Kingston RBS 64 gigabyte SATA half slim. So if I can pull that out now, how do I, how do I install onto, so I have to boot from, I have a Linux box over here. Um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Ms. Love wants to know, have I, have you flashed a Linux USB and if I try, I wish this thing would get out of the way. I've got a little thing here and it's in the way and I can't read the rest of what you just wrote. Uh, try MB, MBR, master boot record. Uh, wait, 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 have you flashed a Linux USB and EFI? I have not tried EFI. I'm not even sure I know how to do that. All I did was try and throw it onto Etcher and uh, do it that way. But now I'm just wondering if it would just be easier to. Uh, it's clearly supporting only legacy. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> clearly, it's telling us that, right? Um, yeah, there's doesn't if I don't know why they wouldn't have just added uh, USB as a boot option on here. I guess because it's a medical device or afraid somebody would hack in. So I get that. Um, Setup defaults. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna load optimal defaults. I'm gonna try something here. Uh, that. Does that give me. Yep. Yeah, same thing. Okay. See, there's the security there. Oh, you can't see that. Hold on. Yeah. So there's what security looks like there. TPM uh, no operation. TPM force clear. Uh, disable and deactivate. What's disable and deactivate? I'm, that's interesting. Uh, 
Uh, this option will automatically return to no operation. Let's try something here. Uh, Jamie says we could use my bench PC to put the installer on uh, on that on board flash if you want. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Um, I, you know what I'm going to do? I, I think I, I'm i not losing anything here. I think what I'm going to do is uh, I've got some time here. I'm waiting. I don't think my I'm waiting for retro cat. She is on her way down for Father's Day. I don't think she's on her way yet uh, because. She wasn't going to leave until four her time, which is five our time. So I've got plenty of time. She's driving from Chicago. Uh, the lovely accountant is in uh, Evansville. She left just about an hour ago. Well, about two hours ago. We went and had lunch uh, before she left. And she went to Evansville to be with her mom. Uh, so I'm on my own tonight for a little while until RetroCat gets here. Uh, but I think I'm going to shut this thing down. And I think I'm going to see what that SS looks like on the inside of this thing so i'm going to keep it going though so if you guys want to watch that you can stay i may as well I may as well do that somebody may want to see that so let me start unplugging some things here go and pull this thing down here interesting this thing's got a battery in it i wasn't expecting that honestly look at this this thing is still on Check that out. Oh man, this could be a, this could be hard to get into. How do we? Whoa, this thing may be locked down. I may have to do some searching to see if. Uh, whoa, that may be hard. Let me go ahead and change this view here a little bit too. So, huh? We'll have to take a look at this. Well, we will. I think this just pops off. This just pops off. This is just a little this amount. Get this keyboard out of the way. And let's power this bad boy down right here. Okay, so there we go. So that's turned off. Let me put this back before I lose it. Trying to stay organized here. Okay, so now what we've got to do is figure out how to break into this thing right here. Oh, man. Uh, I'm guessing that's probably like a laptop motherboard in there. I would guess that too. Um, uh, this is nose. Let's be, let's the nose doesn't turn red. May have security bits. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. Now here's what's interesting. Looks like we have, oh, here we go. Here's a couple of screws, but that's really odd. Check this out because these do not look like screws that I would use to break this thing apart. Good. These screws may come out and it lift out. We'll find out. Uh, we'll give it a shot. Cybernet, 19 volts, 2.1 amps. Designed and manufactured by Cybernet. Okay, well, let's see what we've, we've got. A, we've got a two megapixel camera in here. How about that? Yeah, Spudger for sure. Let me let me grab some stuff here. All right, I've got the Aurea Techno Kit here. Got everything we need right there. So let me go ahead and put that here. And let's see, let's let's tear this bad boy down, see what we can do. Let me get my mic over here a little bit more. That's should help you a little bit. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna start with these screws here. Again, I don't think they're really gonna do anything. That's the thing. But who knows? And then as Jamie said, we may have to spudger this bad boy. Jamie, what are you doing for Father's Day? 
You guys just are just hanging out in Louisville? Well, that is, that is a long screw right there. I don't know if that's going to do anything or not. Uh, sounds like maybe something under the rubber feet might be, yeah. Could be. We'll, we'll check it out and see. This one needs to be broken. This one didn't get broke. Hold on. got a little different that one is too pointy let me try something else here that one might grab it let's see nope that one's too big Check that it has a battery replacement procedure. What? Oh, check that it has a battery. Oh, that's that's a good point. Um, all right, those two screws came out, but I am not guessing that there's a lot there. Let's see. We have, wow, this thing is sealed tight with those screws out. Let me take a spudger here and see if we can make some kind of progress here. Hold on. Let me grab this little guy right here. Looks like there's a little bit of play right there. Might just be clips in here, guys. It seems to be pretty much just popping off. You see, it got a little. Let's just keep uh, moving around the side here and see what happens. Yeah, it looks like it's just kind of got these little clips right here, and it's just going to pull right apart. little more resistance right here but i'm thinking it's just nothing major all right so so if i look right here it appears that this does not want to move Which makes me wonder, is there something under here? Is there a screw under here? So let me see if I can pop this out. There they are. Right there. See them? Got it. So once these come out, we're probably going to be in good shape. Sneaky for sure. All right. Now let's see if this will. There we go. That was it. Not too bad. 
Actually, this was easier than I thought it was going to be. Looks like I got another little clip here. There we go. And I haven't really damaged it either, which is nice because I do kind of want to get it put back together. Oh, got something, something sneaky here, guys. Uh, let me see if I can come back the other way here. There we go. Just need to be a little loose right there. There we go. All right. There we go. So here's the back of this thing right here. Put that up here. here. Here's what we have on the inside. Now, the good news is I can bring this down here for you so you can get a better look at it. All right. So let me turn it around here. Looks like we've got a big lithium ion battery here. That's kind of interesting right there. This, uh, this looks like our wireless right here. Got our four, so we could, this could be upgraded. It looks like this could be easily upgraded to eight gig if I just got a little card in there. So that's something to think about because these eight gig uh, is pretty uh, inexpensive. And then here's that little half height or half width SATA drive. That's really interesting. So that's going to come out. Looks like there's a screw here, uh, one here. It looks like that's all I need. Everything else is really nice and, and contained, which is pretty good. That battery is a 7.4 volt. Oh, it's a CyberMed T100 battery. They they did a lot of branding, their own branding. This is a Kingston Drive, Intel Wi-Fi. Uh, is that Bluetooth too? Probably. And then uh, the memory. Can't really tell. Let's see what we have here. Looks like we, you know, I may have an 8 gig one of these somewhere. This is, this is Kingston, so they didn't really skimp on there. Well, if I can get that to focus for you or not, hold on. This, I should be able to. Let's see. There we go. Right there. Oh, maybe a jumper there to enable USB boot. You think? Wouldn't that be sweet? Where do you think that might be, Jamie? put this back in there a jumper oh man that would be nice so the bios um what is that let me turn on the light i think i can get a little more light here it's not much better but i'm not sure what this is right here i don't see any jumpers there's this is really small and self-contained i will say that yeah, you know, that's a good point. They probably needed a way to... Uh, well, I guess we could just check. Let's see. Oh, this is interesting. Check this out. Let's see if this actually helped us at all. It says how to restore an image using a oh, that's CyberNet. Never mind. I thought it was CyberMed. Wrong, wrong group. So that's not it. Um, looks like there's not a lot of information on your system set up. CyberMed H22, which I think is this. Let's see. Yeah, this is this is it. Um, uh, no, this is a little bit different. This is a little different model. Let's see if we have CPU configuration, system setup. Yeah, this is not the same one. This is the Cyber, this is the T10. So let me see if there's a T10 somewhere. CyberMed T10. How to update the T10 BIOS. Oh, here we go. Um, 
but that says cybernet too huh and this article but this is this looks like yeah this is it and then here's our bios let's see what i just downloaded there all right here's the bios files guys I don't know if, and then they're saying use the flashit.exe. Now oh, that's interesting. I wonder if the new BIOS gives me the ability, let's see, updating the tablet is two-part, you'll flash the EC and the BIOS. First step is to create a bootable flash drive. How do I create a bootable flash drive when it won't boot to, let's see. Hmm. To create a uh, bootable USB memory stick, download files attached to this article. This seems like a process, everybody. Create a legacy flash drive with Linux on it. Yeah, well. That's what I would like to do. Bill Hurd. Hey, Bill. How you doing, man? Good to have you in here. Just saw that you popped in. Uh, I don't know if you're still on. It's been a while since you popped in. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to hack this guy right here. Uh, it's got some kind of weird BIOS in it that's locked down. This is a medical. It's a medic. It's basically a medical computer uh, called the CyberMed. Uh, I don't know if you ran into these in your kind of medical background but this is a cyber med and i'm trying to get windows off of here and install linux uh and it is uh it is being just cantankerous it as all get out so um uh, just trying to review a few things and this is not a prepared live stream or anything i just decided just to pop on at the last minute and uh just see how yeah, I know. Yeah, I remembered you You mentioned once to me that you had uh, your medical background. So Medgear is, I'm sure, the worst to try and hack on. But I did find it was uh, this Kingston. Let me see if I can share with you what I'm looking at here. There we go. It's this guy right here, this drive. What I'm thinking about now is just pulling this SATA half, half size drive and plugging it into a Linux machine and putting Linux on it. But then... I went down this rabbit hole where I found that you can uh, flash the BIOS. And so I'm kind of wondering if I even want to give that a shot or if it's just not worth it. So uh, glad you were able to pop in and, and say hello with us, but nothing really exciting. If you have any tips, that's what everybody else is doing with me right now is they're just kind of helping me figure out how to get through this thing. So. Uh, but I guess uh, the original point of it was, uh, Bill, what I was trying to do is I was trying to get Retro Arch on here just for some, I was going to turn this into like just a fun little gaming device because it's got this great four by three aspect ratio screen. Uh, it does have a really weird, here, you'll, you'll appreciate this too, Bill. This is one of those medical keyboards, which is just horrible. Uh, and then it had a little VESA, 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 however you want to say it, mount that you could put on the back. And I just thought it'd be really cool to put Retro Arch on here and uh, use it for some video games. So now you're all caught up with what I'm trying to do. And I've been on here for about an hour and 15 minutes. And Bill, just uh, you can see this is a real friendly group in here. They're just hanging out with me as they do on a lot of Sunday afternoons. And we just see if we can hack on something, break something. Uh, or uh, in other cases, sometimes I'm actually doing something with, oh, an old Commodore computer, which I believe you have some experience with that, if I'm not mistaken, right? So <laughs> good to have you join us though, real quick. Much, much appreciated. Let me see if I can figure out what just happened there. Let me go back here. Um, oh, that was that one. We can't use that one right now, right? There we go. So I need this. So let me go back over here. 
And guys, let's see if we can, uh, this says create a bootable USB. See, but here's the thing though. I, again, I don't know how we're going to boot from USB when the BIOS and the silly thing didn't even. So I'm back to, I think I just want to, I think it's, I just want to go ahead and pull this guy out. And then what I'm going to do is see if we can install Linux on there and go from there. So let's see if we can pull this guy out and go back to our original game plan here. And maybe I'll look at the BIOS later. Um, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to have to flash the BIOS once I put Linux on here, right? It should just boot to the legacy device, which this is the legacy device and it should just pop up. So, all right, let's give this a shot and see if we can get this guy out of here. Uh, Jamie, would you say, let me pull up, I'm, I'm going to bring some chat over. Hang on just a second. I'm going to copy this chat over here and get it into this window so that I can see what you all are saying while I am, there we go. And then I can move this over for you. There we go. That's better. Uh, Jamie says, uh, it may just do it even if it's not showing up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I tried it. I tried, uh, booting to USB. It never, it just always went right to the windows. And I tried three different USB sticks, uh, because I know those can vary, you know, uh, whether it'll boot from that or not. Jamie says, if you don't have any kernel module drivers, but you may need to partition it, if it's going to be your install. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, um, well, well, we'll figure out. I, I do have, I believe I was going to put L Ubuntu on here was my plan. I might still have uh, that. We'll try that here in just a minute. Um, oh, that's interesting. I wonder, I got a couple things we're going to try. We're still going to pull this out, but there is something else I'm going to try. So. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of here. All right, now this should just slide out of here. All right, there we go. Now this isn't, I, I, you know what I'm going to do is now that this is out, I am going to, let me put this back in here. We are going to plug it in. And I just want to see if we can boot from USB. I don't think it's going to change anything this right now, but I do just want to check something and see. So this goes like this. Really weird. Oh, I don't need this though. Let's get let's kill this. There we go. Well. Come on, Steven. There we go. All right. And then we're going to put our power back on here which is right getting a collection of goodies here aren't we let's put that over there let's put this right here all right let's let's see what happens when i boot we should get an error of course no operating system but i'm just curious what we're going to get let me turn that light off there for you all right power has been applied Okay, no bootable device. Good. Okay, so now what I think I want to do is, and I'm not sure if I can show you all this or not. Let me get this. Oh, let me get rid of this keyboard. I'm not going to use that other keyboard after all. Yes, as you can tell, I'm a big clean up as I go kind of guy. Telling that I hang on to stuff and know where it is if I do that. All right, so now I have. Let me see if I can find Oh, you don't want that screen. Uh workbench. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop over Let me just go over here. Let me go back here. 
Uh, I'm going to kill some drives here, some windows. And I am going to see if I have, at one point, I had, there it is, El Ubuntu is on here on my desktop. You can't see it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I am going to find a good USB drive that I know boots. This is one that has always booted on everything. Uh, this is a data traveler. I'm going to plug this in here. This may actually even have an OS on it. If it does, we may just plug that in and see. Okay, so let me see what we have here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so that I just I just plug that in and nothing showed up there. So I'm not sure if there's a I'm going to go ahead and I am going to put El Ubuntu on that device. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know if Bill's still in the house. Uh, Bill may have popped out already. He might be listening. He may be using a. He might be just kind of hanging out and listening in the background. Oh, no, he's still there. Oh, my gosh, Bill. You must be bored, my friend. If you're sitting here watching me burn a disk, uh, a USB disk to, to install, you must be really bored today. But thanks for joining. Hey, happy Father's Day to you, too, Bill. Uh, I've been saying happy Father's Day to everybody, so I know uh, you've got a son. I think that I think you have a son. Do you have um, is that is that your only sibling is a son? I do remember a son because I think he. He helps you with your book. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, let me see if I can. I think I can give you a view of my desktop here. So let me go ahead and change this. I'm going to kill this. No, I don't want to kill it. I just want to turn it off. There we go. And I'm going to add a video capture device so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, nope, that's not going to be that. That's going to be, so I am, let's say desktop, let's call this desktop. Uh, name is already, oh, so I already have that. Where is that? Uh, looks like I already have one. This is what I get for not, I don't see one called desktop. That's what I get for not having all this set up before you guys join me. Um, Workbench. All right, I'm just going to create another one right here. Okay. So that will be screen capture here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So you're, you're seeing a little bit of a, a disaster there, but that will go away here in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this right here. There we go. And then I am going to go back to my desktop right here. Okay, so that I'm just making sure it's working. I'm going to minimize that. So then what I'm going to do is uh, let's bring up uh, Etcher right here. And we need an image, so we're going to flash from, I'm going to uh, pull this, and I've got El Ubuntu right here. So I'm going to drop that right there. And then our target, we're going to select this guy right here. Or maybe not. There we go. All right. Um, that is the 100. Make sure I get the right one. I don't want to make sure. And, okay, select that one. And then we're going to flash that. Now, this is a lot like watching grass grow for sure. Watching this go. And so then what we're going to do is flash this. Uh, the next thing I want to do then is pop that out, plug it into the CyberMed, and we'll see if it boots from USB with no bootable device present on there. And I don't think, Jamie, I loved your idea about is there some kind of jumper on there that would let me 
boot from USB, but I I don't know. Let me go back to here so you guys don't have that weirdness. Um, let's see. Check the options for legacy mode, please. Uh, oh, you mean now while we're in this? Yeah, we may as well while we're in here, right? Okay, let's do that. That's a great point. So let me go ahead and uh, reboot this thing. You all would probably like to watch that with me. So here we go. So now we're going to turn this on again. I'm going to hold the delete key on this crummy keyboard. All right, so now let's pop over here. Yeah, so there's no option for boot. Now, that's kind of interesting. Um, you still would think there would be an option, right? That's very odd. Uh, no. Matter of fact, I can't even move through the selection now. What's going on there? Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. Um, Mislav's provided a link. Uh, Bolana only burns EFI. So are you saying, Mislav, Mislav, that that is a good thing or a bad thing? Because I thought that's what we wanted. Uh, if not, what, what, what tool should I use? That's going to be an interesting act. Uh, yes, let's go to that site. Uh, you want, oh, master boot record, um, if that's an older device. I see what you're talking about. Uh, bad thing is you need legacy. Um, hmm, how do I, I could restore on the image that you write as an application. I could, well, let's, let's try it first. Um, I could try something else. Yeah, it looks like we've got a while to go on Etcher, too. We're 20%. So that's going to take um, that. How do I... How, um, Rufus can make an MBR one. Rufus, I am not familiar on... Go go to Jamie's on Windows and use Rufus. I have... Uh, I do not have a Windows machine. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> not doing Windows. Uh, I have uh, Mac and Linux only in this house, other than this goofy thing down here, which was Windows that we just uh, pulled out. So I guess I could install it on here and do a, a burn it on here, right? Yeah, but, oh, where is, well, the ThinkPad I would love, but the ThinkPad, Jamie, has, oh, wait, it does have Windows on it. Wait a minute. You're right, Jamie. I do have another Windows machine. Forgot all about that. So Rufus, let me let me research Rufus. Rufus, uh, create bootable USB drives the easy way. Uh, and there's nothing like this for Mac, huh? Is that what you're telling me? Um, oh, I see. Yeah, I got you because yeah, I'm reading the page now. I see what you guys are saying. Uh, and I do have Windows 11 on that. All right. Well, here we go. I guess I'm gonna run upstairs. <laughs> I'm about an hour away. Um, I will run upstairs, grab the Lenovo, and be right back. So this is the point where you all in chat can just kind of hang out, chat amongst yourselves, and I'll be back right back with the Lenovo. It's upstairs, and we'll put Rufus on it. Uh, but, but when that's ready, this will be done. Uh, oof, man, this is a lot of work, folks. Okay, I'll be right back.
All right, so here we go. Let me get my thumb back to you. There we go. Come on. Hey, camera. You get locked back on me. Come on. There we go. All right. Let's see. What have you guys been talking about? Uh, <laughs> one and a half hours away for a little bit. Uh, Jimmy's going out for a smoke. What? Mizloff, you are not a smoker. Let's see. Uh, Bill, did you do the Texas VCF or has that happened? Um, did anybody interface SB32? Um, I have an issue. The extraneous inputs on the pen are causing watch. Uh, Jamie might be able to help you with that. Let's see. Jamie says my exposure is just basic uh, OLED. Oh, I see. Okay. So I've got the, um, I, how far are we long? I've got the ThinkPad here, Jamie. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot I even had the silly thing. So let me make some room here. Because it is getting pretty proudly here. This was so much easier in the days of Commodore computers. Let me tell you, this was so much easier. I mean, I was playing with a C64 all morning. That was so much more enjoyable than this mess. So I guess it is what it is, though. Miss the days of just flipping a switch, turn it on, and it works for sure. All right, let me plug this in. I bet the battery on this is dead. And I'm looking for Rufus. All right, well, that's, hey, come here, camera. Lock on, will you? There you go. So let me move this over here. And let's see, what is that plugged into? Uh, so I can unplug that. That's on battery power. And then I can plug this in here. Maybe. Or maybe not. Hold on. Gonna need an adapter for that. Not there. Spender, so I can get to that. The old workbench is crowded for sure. All right, let's move this over here, move that over there. I'm gonna have to change a few things for us. Uh, I can change this so you can see a lot more, which is nice. There we go. All right, so I'll move that and then we'll turn the ThinkPad on and we will download us some Rufus, <laughs> which is just, what a great name, I will say that. All right, so let's see this booting over here. There we go. How are we with, uh, this is a mess, man, I need another. This is not my normal setup, so I'm I'm kind of out here. Uh, all the cool dudes smoke, oh my gosh. Uh, well, I've been known, I have been, hey, come here, come here, camera. There we go, ooh, gotta get this thing. Back over, let me see if I can get this thing tracked. And that's one of the things about this camera that drives me bonkers. Is it's a self-tracker, but it sometimes does not track. I'm going to pull up the controls. All right. Insta controller app. And let's um, go back over here. There we go. <laughs> now, we're, now we're good. All right. So let's see. Uh, oh, uh, uh, where are you going to be, Bill? You're going to be, oh, at the Texas. Okay, I'm tracking. Uh, I think Bill, Bill Wakes sees my skillet. Um, under device, select the USB flash drive that you want to format. Under boot instructions, click tap select button and navigate, select your ISO. Okay, so I've got to get it on here first. Uh, I do want to check though before. Let me see. Is is Etcher done? Etcher is still not done. So we still got 84% flashing on Etcher. It says it's got two minutes and some change left. So do that. 
What a good group. Thank you all for uh, staying with me today and just kind of helping me get this thing done. Looks like, here's the thing. I, I have not had this Lenovo turned on in a while. And when you don't turn Windows machines on for a while, it wants to install updates like crazy. So I'm going to let it do that. Uh, while it's doing that, though, this is pretty fast. This is a i7. So Rufus Windows. Okay, downloading Rufus. Uh, I don't know if I can share with you what I'm doing here easily. I don't think I can. So uh, I could, uh, what I could do is, you know what I could do? I say I can. I just did it. Let me see if I can do it over here, too. Uh, let's see. Let's capture. Oh, yeah. I'm going to knock something loose here in just a minute. Let's do this right. Come on, you. I can do this. I have, I have, I have the ability to do this. All right. Let's do that right there. Okay. And then I should be able to come back over here and let's go back to our retro arch. There you go. Now you can see what I'm doing over here. So we're going to grab Rufus. This is definitely a hacky way to do all this. Let's go ahead and download Standard 4.1 should do it. Now we'll just put that on the desktop. Save that. Close Text Expander. Uh, where did it go? There. Uh, yeah, 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 I know. I know my connection is. So there it is. Right there. Yes. Uh, do you want to allow Rufus to check for application updates? Why not? Seems like the thing to do. All right, there is Rufus. So we have that ready to go if we need to need to work. So that is good to go. Now let's see where we are with Etcher. Like Etcher is uh, validating. I typically I skip the validation process. I don't know that I need to keep doing that. Let's see under device uh, under the file system. Plug in the USB. Well, I've got a first of all, I've got to you know the other thing I've got to do is I've got to get El Ubuntu from over here to over there. So uh, let's see how do I want to do that. Uh, I guess I could just copy it over on a USB. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I need another USB. Let me find a USB. Here is a 16 gig cruiser. That should do it. Plug that into the Mac. All right, there we go. Now you're not going to see this, so hang on. Uh, that one, all right, that looks good. And we will pull this and drop that onto there. All right, I'm copying El Ubuntu over to, you know, we're probably doing all this, guys, and none of this is going to work. But hey, we're learning in the process. And more importantly, we are just hanging out and spending time together uh, on a nice Sunday afternoon. So show advanced drive properties. Oh, you want me to show that over here? Okay, show advanced drive properties. Got it. All right. Uh, use Rufus with uh, list all hard drives. Oh, look at this. Uh, so now here's a question. Could I, could I, hold on, hold on. Can, can I do this? If I plug this in with a USB SATA adapter, which I'm pretty sure I have around here somewhere. I'm just not, might be over there somewhere. Could I, could I install directly to this from there? Uh, good. Our, 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 this, this is done. So that's a question I have. Again, I am not 
the smartest cookie in the jar by any stretch. Okay, let me let me get this out of here. Looks like I can. Hey, it looks like uh, Etcher is done, guys. Uh, why don't we give? Let's give it a shot. So make sure I get pull out the right one. I've got a couple of drives in here that are doing stuff. All right, so here's what we have. We have, if I can figure out where I am, this right here has uh, has just been, um, we've just done Etcher, uh, uh, used it to put El Ubuntu on here as a bootable. This would normally, without uh, weirdness, work on anything else that could boot from a USB drive. So we are going to come back over here and we're going to give it a shot. So let me pull up my workbench here. And I'm going to move more stuff out of the way so you can see what we're doing here. So I'm going to move this this way. All right, we're going to take this. We're going to plug this in to the USB right here. All right, and then we're going to reboot. Let's go to shop. Uh, exit, saving changes. Yep. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, hey, oh, 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 look, 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 look. We got a boot option. So before I didn't see this. Now this makes me almost want to put that Kingston back in there and try this again. But first, let's just see if we can boot from here. See what happens. Aha, so that's good, right? That's good. Uh, I am not gonna go any further because what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to shut it down and plug that SSD in there and then we're gonna try this again, okay? So let me shut this guy down. All right, so then we're gonna unplug the power and the keyboard. We're gonna flip this bad guy, little guy over here. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to plug this back in right here. Wow, we, we I don't know, maybe, maybe we're going to make some progress. Uh, this went this way, if I remember. No, it was this way. That's right. It can only go one way. So that's nice. All right, I'm not going to put the screws in. I'm not going to bother with that. All right, we're going to turn this back over. We are going to plug this in. We're going to put our keyboard back in. And you all are going to hold your mouths right, cross your fingers. And I don't know if Bill's still in here. If he is, he's a good, he's our good luck charm for the day. Him popping in here just meant that good things are going to happen. I'm convinced of it. It's not just every live stream that gets a Bill heard in it. So here we go. Going to fire it on. Hit delete. Oh, let's give this a shot, everybody. Uh, 50 percent. I know. Here we go. Okay, that went into the setup utility. I did not mean to do that. Hold on. Oh man, let me turn it back off. I meant to do. I think it was F11. Boot manager. Our, oh, oh, we have not seen this before. This is new. Three USBs. It took this data traveler, this Kingston data traveler, to get to this menu. So evidently, it's just because I was using three USBs that it did not like. So, so far, so good. Uh, do you smell something? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see if this is. Let's see if this is going to go. Uh, let's go ahead and hit this. Okay, so we can try or install L, L Ubuntu. We want to install. Uh, that's it. That's what I'm smelling too. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Let's see how far we get. Let's see if we can wipe Windows out of here. I will tell you this. If we get, uh, don't kudos yet. We've we've still got a ways to go. Um, we're, we're, we're hanging right now, but we'll we'll see what we have. We're still closer anyway.
this is probably USB 2.0. Uh, could be 1.0. I don't, I don't know. If you, no, surely not USB 1.0 because this was a Celeron, so an Atom processor. So this is probably USB 2.0. I don't see any activity from the data traveler. Um, I guess I can pick it up. I don't have to really worry about it. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything yet. Bill, you might be right on that 50%. We're 50% there, but we're 50% not because nothing is happening here. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just, I think we have to wait though, right? Because this could take a while. It could take a while to boot from that USB, but I wish I had some kind of access light or something. I'm not seeing anything. I was feeling so good about this too. All right, so taking a poll from the room. How many of you would wait this long or how many of you would just try and reboot and try it again? So feel free to pop in, let me know. Uh, Neil says, is there an x86 version of BMC bare metal Commodore that would look... Uh, there is not a uh, bare metal Commodore, which is so funny you say this, Neil, because I've been researching bare metal Commodore all morning. Uh, there's also not a version for the Raspberry Pi 400, which is really disappointing. That's what I was trying to work on this morning a little bit. So I went back to Combian 64, uh, but there is not uh, one that works for that. So unfortunately, I am not seeing anything right now that makes me th think good, positive vibes. Uh, all right, Jamie, see you. Uh, safe travels if you're coming back home. Uh, see you down the street a little bit later. Also, looks like my daughter just left Chicago. For those of you curious. Looks like she is driving past the University of Chicago right now. So she won't be here till about 930 tonight, for those of you keeping track uh, and following along. Um... So I, I'm going to, we're going to try it again. I'm going to check and see if I can, I, I, this is, this is nothing is what this tells me right here. So let me go ahead and reboot. All right. Let's go to our boot manager. And I'm going to try this again. Um, let's, let, let me try, let me just see if we can boot. Let's see what happens if we, if we can just boot from, I'm just wondering if it just takes forever. Te oh, you want me to test memory? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. we can do that. That's a good idea. Let me go ahead because I, it's not going to hurt. Let's just go ahead and do that. Bill's recommending a test memory. Let's see what we have here. All right, so we'll come back down here. That's actually a good idea because then it'll at least let us know if things are running from here. So, all right, we're testing memory. A little different screen. Oh, that's interesting. It just went right back. It didn't even... Yeah, now it's just booting right into Windows. So that probably... Something is happening there. I bet the BIOS is not allowing it to boot from... And you can't see because my big head is in the way. Uh, let me undo that. So this right here, it's not letting me boot from this drive right here. So the, I'm guessing the BIOS is stop, it's letting it see it, but I'm guessing that it's not letting it boot any software from here, probably for security reasons. So I think we're back to Trying, yeah, see, it's just booting in my regular Windows now. Um, how much time do I have? Well, I've got, Ms. Lop, what, um, I don't know, probably have an hour, maybe, if I really wanted to. <laughs> it's That's the point now, do I really want to? What, what do you have in mind, sir? What are you thinking? 
I mean, you are one of my executive producers, Ms. Love, so I have to at least give you the time of day, right? Hey, look, it did finally, it booted right into RetroArch, which is nice, but as we know, RetroArch is kind of a disaster in itself right now on Windows because it just keeps bombing out. So, I mean, we couldn't even load content from the core earlier. Let's see, I assume that's still the same thing. Let's see. Um, Yeah, and it's it's locked up again, which is why we're trying to get out of here because this is a horrible experience. Go ahead and move this back up here for you guys. And let me lock that into place so I don't move that. Uh, it's midnight here and I'm going to cut you through Rufus. All right, we're going to Rufus. Oh boy, really? We're going to go through Rufus? We're going to give Rufus a try. Okay, well... If it's midnight for you and it's only 5.54 for me, then Rufus it is. We will give it a shot and see if we can create a USB with a master boot record and go from there. Now, what I need to do, did I get, uh, I did have, let me make sure this copied over. Hold on just a second. Uh, looks like I do have, yes, I do have El Ubuntu on as an ISO on a USB drive that I can move over. So we've made progress there. So let me go ahead and, Go back to here, there we go. And let me turn this guy back on. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the cyber med. All right, and we are going to do a couple of things over here. First of all, let me get things arranged where I can type. Uh, so now you've got the Lenovo over here. Uh, and I think what Mislav wants to do with me is, let me go ahead and eject this drive safely. So let me go ahead and eject. All right, we are going to Rufus. Okay, let me grab. All right, that is done. And let me come back into OBS. Right there, there we go. Uh, all right, so here's what we're going to do. I need to get, first of all, uh, is that going to work? Man, that is tight. Do I have another USB over here? It looks like I do. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and put that in here. Okay. So this is, I'm going to take this and let's go ahead and, I mean, it's not the best place to put it, but I'm going to put it on the desktop just to make it easy. We're going to copy it. And it's going to take a while. Let's see that there. So let me check in on chat. Uh, under device, uh, put the drive you want to write to. Okay, let me, first of all, I, got, I need the port to get this copied over. Once I have the image over, then I will do that for us, Ms. Love. Uh, and that USB drive is, well, I want to use the one I just used. So that's going to be this one right here. So. Okay, so we got 19% complete to do that. Wow, my desk is a mess. It is it is a hot mess right here, I'm telling you. Yeah, I should move that camera up while I'm thinking about it. Because what I've learned is, if that were moved, eh, that's going to be a disaster if I do that. So I'm not going to mess with that right now. You can see, I can get you a little better view. Not much, because this camera is, there we go. That gives you a little more. See everything that's going on as I'm inserting and taking stuff off. Uh, Rufus is still over here, still waiting. Looks like, uh, yeah, you can see where it's going to select some things here for us. So we'll wait for us to get our image here. Uh, hey, there's four of you hanging out. Thanks for hanging out, all four of you. What a what a great little what a great place to hang out. I, um, uh, so question for all of you, I do not plan on leaving this stream online. There's probably, I'm just going to pull this one down. This is so haphazard and everything. So this one will not stay online. Uh, I will pull it off. I think what I will do though is, and I didn't record it, but I'll grab it from YouTube. I will pull it down from YouTube when it's done processing and uh, I might pull some pieces out of it that might be useful, make some shorts or something out of it. But there's not a lot of value in today's 
live stream other than us just hanging out and uh, having Bill join us. So Bill, you know, maybe you brought a lot of value to this. So thanks for joining us. Bizlov is going to work us through this though. I think right now it's just Bill, Neil, uh, Mislav. There's two others. I'm not sure who that is. We may have a couple of lurkers. So if you are watching and you're not dropped in the chat, pop in the chat real quick. Let us know you're there. Uh, we'd love to know who's with us today. All right, so that is copied over. So now we have right here, you can see we have our image. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, eject this out of there. Look at that, because we are not going to write to this one. Uh, ooh, how do we... Where's the eject button? Windows just drives me nuts. I'm telling you, shouldn't there be an eject in here, guys? Is it here and I'm just not seeing it? Um, oh, maybe it's on the wrong one here. Maybe it's this one. No, it's not that one either. Okay, so I I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way. Um, there we go. All right. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this in, and now we're going to Rufus. All right, Mislav, here we go. Yeah, I don't want, that's fine. I, I know it's not accessible. That's fine. It's got a operating system on it. Okay, so uh, right here we have multiple partitions uh, for this. Select the boot image. Um, let's see, we need to select... How do I, can I just drag and drop this little guy in here? There we go. All right, so we're, here's our device. I'm gonna go to this. Uh, the, the partition scheme is MBR. Yep, got it, Mislov, right, I'm tracking with you. Uh, so we just did that. Here's our volume label. Looks like, uh, I'm gonna wait for you just a minute, Mislov, but if you say, click start, I'm clicking start. Oh, who, who's, uh, oh, Mark. Oh, hey, Mark. I, I, I saw, uh, I'm watching, but unable to offer advice, AKA lurking. Well, thanks, Mark. Thanks for, you're not technically lurking now. Well, you're, you're, you are, but thanks for letting us know you were out there. I didn't know that was you, Mark. So good to have you there. Thanks for popping in. And, uh, I think, I think Miss Loff is getting ready to tell me right now to just press start. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to hit start and we are going to burn this bad boy. Uh, ISO, this means it can be written in either ISO, uh, or DD image mode. Rufus recommends using ISO. Okay. That's good. So you always have full access to the drive after writing it. However, if you encounter issues during boot, you can try. Okay. We're going to go with ISO because that seems to be it. So here we go. Uh, uses grub, which is good. That's what we want. Uh, yes, to connect to the internet and attempt to download it. Why not? We want to do that. And warning all data will be gone. Yes, we want all data gone. Yes, just click OK. Mislav just wants me to click OK. I am clicking OK. Going as fast as I can. I sound like someone who's running an auction right now. There we go. And I don't know why that window just popped up. Uh, but here we go. It is writing the master boot record. Here we go, Mislav. I think we're, we're cooking with gas now. It will be interesting to see if this works. I am holding out hope that it does. Now, again, here's our other option. If this doesn't work, I think I'm going to be done for the day if this doesn't work. Uh, but what what I what my next thing will be, because I'm not sure, I, I could, I'm just not sure I know where it is. There is this, I do have a USB uh, 3.0 or 2.0 to SATA uh, drive connector somewhere in this menagerie of that I call a workspace. And the other choice is to install Linux directly to that from another device. Uh, I'm not sure how I do that. I think I'm going to have to boot from USB to Linux, plug, make sure that device is, and then install onto that device and then plug it back in. So I won't do that today. I, I can tell Mislav really wants to see if this is going to work. So I, I promise to do that for him. And 
Hey, uh, Carcher, uh, uh, St. Joseph, uh, let's see, Carcer St. Joseph. Hey, good to have you. Hello. Uh, you are bald like Bill. Any can't stay. I am bald like Bill. Uh, I think Bill is a much better looking man than I am. Uh, or maybe not. I don't know, Bill. This is, this is, I'm not, not no judgment on Father's Day. Uh, but yes, Bill and I are both bald. Uh, but I am not Bill, in case you're confused. Bill, Bill is much smarter than me. Uh, but glad to have you here. Thanks for letting us know that you uh, dropped in and say hi. It's good to have you here. And so thankful you just popped in. So happy Father's Day if you uh, are a father too. So good to have you here. Thanks for popping in. This is why I just like dropping in on a live stream on a Sunday just to say hi. And, and as I've always said, I always have the friendliest chatters on YouTube at this particular time. So thank you all for for joining and thanks for the Father's Day wishes and back at everybody. So very cool to have you here. Thanks, uh, Car Sayer, I believe is the way I should pronounce it, right? Care, or is it Care Sayer? Uh, sorry, Care Sayer, maybe. Or I could just call you St. Joseph and call it a day. Hey, Chris, hey, uh, welcome to Team Ball. Chris, good to have you pop in today too. Thanks, Chris. Chris, is this your first live stream with me? For some reason, the name sounds familiar uh but it may be close enough thank you uh that's what i thought i thought it was your first one so thanks for popping in this was completely an ad hoc live stream it's not one of my prepared uh so sorry it is scattered beyond belief there is nothing i'm just hanging out while i'm working on the workbench and people are just popping in so thanks for joining chris appreciate you being in here if you want to see a prepared live stream i have a bunch of those on the channel you can see those are a little more structured uh, I have uh, usually an outline of what I'm going over. I have no outline. I, I have no idea where this is headed. I mean, this live stream was so weird. We had Bill Hurd pop in. I mean, that's that's every that's every live streamer's dream is just to have Bill Hurd just kind of drop in. Uh, Bill says, I just dropped you in the Discord. <laughs> there you go. That works. Uh, by the way, speaking of discords, I do have my own discord as well. For those of you that are channel members, uh, you know that you can pop into my discord as well. Bill has a discord that's really active as well. If you want to check that in, make sure you do that. Uh, so, uh, a couple of really great discord channels there. Uh, hi, Bill. I may be the ball. Uh, say hi, Bill. May the bald grow over ever balder. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, we got a good group in here. Oh, that's, I see what you're saying. So Bill dropped this live stream into his Discord. So some of those folks are popping over from there into here. So we've got some cross-pollination going on. I'm finally tracking Bill. It just took me a minute, okay? Uh, I got a lot going on and <laughs> I should have figured that out a lot earlier, but I finally put it together. Hey, thanks for dropping my live stream into your Discord. And uh, thanks to the Bill Heard Discord guys for popping over. Bill's nice. He provides his Bill, his Discord for free. All I ask is that you become a member and then you can join my Discord. So uh, a little different, a little different Discord model there. Uh, and we're having a, we're actually having a blast over on my Discord too. Got a couple of fun channels that we've been playing around in and chatting about. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can find the link at uh, buymeacoffee.com slash retrocombs and you can join at the lowest level, which is the Commodore pet level. Hey, Bill, you'll love it. I have membership levels at pet level vic 20 level c64 level 128 level come on don't fall asleep on me computer uh what do i have 128 uh and then i think i go plus four yeah i have a plus four level and then the ultimate is my mega level which is where um mislav is and that makes him an executive producer for the channel do you want to click oh wait canceling i don't want to cancel click no click no stop goofy thing so yeah, I, I've, I'm all into this whole Commodore level thing. And that just makes it affordable on a lot of different levels for people to join. You get free stuff too. You can get some stickers. You can get access to free stuff online, uh, ask, access to the Discord, shout outs, all that fun stuff. So I've gone crazy with it. Uh, this is still burning, right? It says 34.3%. This thing went to sleep and now I'm afraid that it's not continuing, come on. Why did this stupid thing time out on me? Uh-oh, I am not a fan of Windows at all. Look, it looks like it stopped at 
34.3 percent let me go to my control panel and oh there it goes it looks like it started again it's at 30 there we go 35 i'm going to see if i can get this thing to stop from going to sleep on me what in the world um where would that be uh not sleep um power options there we go let's go to power options and we do not want it uh, high performance let's see hopefully that will okay here we go uh turn the turn the display off never that's the problem right there uh when, oh on battery it's okay on battery we, we'll say after one hour uh we do not want to turn off the display ever when it's plugged in which is what it is now okay so put the computer sleep and okay so we'll just do that right there all right that should take care of it. are we back in business okay we're at 44 percent there we go uh wait for another percentage hardware and sound got it all right, so I think we're back. Um, okay, got 46.3% to go. It is a slow process. I'm telling you what, when you're uh, burning it. This might be because, oh, I, I actually see a light here too. I don't know if you can see that. Let me show you. I did not see that before. Let me show you the light right here. You can see it flashing right there. So that's where we are. OBS seems to be working. Uh, for those of you that have been with me a while, Ms. Slav, and uh, I think you're the only one left. Um, I assume this stream has been pretty stable. I haven't heard you all say we've had some flickering or anything, so that's good. Still waiting on that two gigabit to be installed. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, the community that I live in is going uh, gigabit fiber all the way around town. We got it installed. I just got my notification that I can sign up for two gig symmetrical, two gig up, two gig down for, you ready for this? $70. What a deal. And uh, I am going to have them run that fiber directly to my live stream station. So that when I live stream, I've got direct connect. Uh, so I've got actually two areas. If you see me live stream normally, this is not the setup. If it's a prepared live stream, I'm on the other side of the wall over there running an ATEM Mini ISO Extreme. And we're going to get that connected to fiber. And uh, that's going to be really nice. Right now, I'm on Wi-Fi right now. So uh, so that's what I'm working on. Mislav has uh, 256 megabits per second. Uh, that, that works. Right now, I'm running at uh, four. No, I have eight so here's comcast is what i have which they're horrible as far as what they provide i mean i've, I've had pretty good luck with them but i have 800 gigabits down but only 25 up so when you're dealing with video i'd like to have a lot more than 25 up because when i'm uploading uh youtube videos for instance it takes forever to upload so yeah oh oh that's your no that's your new speed oh i see what you're saying yes which would be megabytes. There we go. I got you. I'm tracking. Yes. So imagine that 256 megabytes per second up. So I should be able to upload a YouTube video in five to 10 seconds, which right now it's eh, depending on how large it is, right? It's about two, three, four, five, ten 10 minutes. So that's going to be kind of cool. Where are we here though? We are at 62% because I'm sure we are flashing on USB 2.0, which is kind of a pain in the neck right here. So, Ms. Lobby, you still awake, right? Hanging in there with me, right? Okay. Uh, so, let's see. We've got seven of you hanging out with me. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, Bill says, my Cisco brand firewall can't do two megabits per second. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't think about the infrastructure. I will say this. I had the option, Bill, to either uh, lease their router uh, and it is a Wi-Fi router and then what I'll do is run it through my Google Home or my Google Fi or I could buy my own. I decided for the short term to use the one that they provide because I yeah I, I got you're talking two gig yeah you're right 
Um, and I decided just to go ahead and use their router for now. I want to try, and so that, I guess my cost really is going to go up because I think they're charging me, I don't know, $5 a month for their router or something like that. But I, I do want to see what router they install. And I want to research as other people are on the network, which ones people are buying. But I did decide to use their router initially to get it in the house and get everything working. Not the best financial decision, I get it. Uh, but in the long run, or in the short run, it's probably going to be advantageous for me to understand how the network works and everything before I buy my own. So, uh, yes, firewalls increasingly increasingly bottlenecks, generally designed for one gigabit. Yeah, so uh, so I get the two megabits, or two megabits, the two gigabit service for two years at seventy dollars uh, for seven for seventy dollars, which is normally what their one gig service is. So it's kind of nice that they're providing two years. If you sign up now for two years, you get two for $70. So not bad. In two years, that price will drop probably even further. So a lot going on in our space. Uh, and again, it's gonna be interesting to see how they bring it into the house. I'm hopeful because it's run in fiber in front of the house. They dug trenches, uh, put it underneath by the road that they can bring it in and run it anywhere I want and not have to come in through where Comcast comes, which is a line run into the house, drop from uh, a line, a pole outside in. So a lot there. I said a lot, probably confused a bunch of you. Uh, yeah, the D mark, right? Thank you. The D mark is out back for Comcast from um, a pole in. I'm hoping because it's fiber, they can come from the front. Now they can come in, put it anywhere. And if they can D mark into where I am right now, boom, I am golden. So that's what I'm hoping. So that's that's the whole point. Yes, the point of demarcation. So that was a lot, I know, but I was trying to burn some time. Well, it is. Is it a public utility? It is not a public utility. It is a private. Uh, the public has been in kind of in bed with them trying to make sure and get this in. They are trying to do, um, we're in a county that's trying to do a countywide fiber initiative right now. So they're starting with, the city I live in, and then they're gonna go from there and span out uh, to the rest of the county. The goal is by December of 2024, the whole county will be in fiber, which is pretty amazing when you think about a, a whole county because the county really needs it. Uh, we have, uh, we're, I mean, the, the, the city I live in is 40,000, the county is about 80,000, and so being able to provide gigabit fiber to all of them is pretty cool. Um, Bill says, uh, private may have alternatives to public DMARC, depending on state. Gotcha. Uh, what happened to compression? <laughs> That's good. You know, what we were, the city council and the county council have been working on this. And so they are, uh, asking for public forums. And, uh, I was invited to attend, uh, a couple of the public forums and had some individual conversations with a couple of the county commissioners. Uh, they decided to go fiber. Uh, I mentioned, I wondered if they were going to go 5G and wireless towers as, instead some, some counties are going to go that direction. Uh, and I think, I don't know where we are with 6G, but 5G now is fast enough for a lot of folks in the county and you could probably put it out there pretty quickly. But I think some counties in the state where I live, which is Indiana, which is the state I live in now, uh, Bill, which I believe you're from originally, um, there it depends on the county how they're attacking it and, and the county i'm in just chose to use fiber so that's it's kind of interesting to see how they're how they're doing that uh my phone is 3g but i'm always 15 years behind yeah we're on 5g i'm getting a solid 5g right now you know it's interesting i'm not sure what i haven't checked uh, like a speed test on it but i think 5g what are we what are we getting in 5g i don't know what 5g's claims are i'm not sure how that works uh grant county okay yeah so i am in bartholomew county bill so that gets you narrowed down a little bit to where i am so we are at 94 percent miss love are you still awake are you still there are you still out there because if you're not out there i've done all of this without you i i i can't do this without you. i mean we're getting ready to uh, eject here and plug in over here in just a second. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, let's see. Okay. You're still there. Good. Oof. It's late where you are, sir. You, you need to get some sleep before work. Don't you? 
I think we're on a, a 5G is about, that's what I was thinking. 5G is about 100 megabits uh, per second, mega, megabytes per second, megabits per second. There we go. Yeah. So, which is so much better than what we used to have on these, right? But it's still probably, oh, you're off tomorrow. Yeah. So we're off tomorrow uh, in the United States. Uh, the, tomorrow is a federal holiday. So if you're a state employee or a federal uh, employee, you get off tomorrow for Juneteenth. Uh, so that's a new holiday that's just been um, signed in by Indiana last year or two years, last year, I believe. So uh, I work in education, so I get the day off tomorrow myself, uh, which is why the uh, retro cat, my daughter, is headed down from Chicago uh, and uh, she's going to hang out with me tomorrow. And then she's got something planned for me on Tuesday night. She won't tell me this is a, a, a belated Father's Day gift. Um, uh, and she, she won't tell me we're going to Indianapolis for something, but she refuses to tell me what it is. So, all right, we are ready. It is done. Uh, we are going to come over here and, uh, uh, we don't want to start. We're going to close this. Uh, looks like I'm going to make sure everything's completely done. Close that. We are going to eject this drive. Let me make sure that that is already ejected. Um, Eject that one right there. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here. And how do we wanna do this? Let me go back to here and let me move a few things for you. I'm gonna go ahead and we're not gonna need uh, the Lenovo anymore. So I'm gonna unplug that and move it out of the way. By the way, Bill, for the uh, for for the reason I had the the only Windows machine in here is so that I can do development for uh, Commodore 64, 128, and Mega 65. So that's the only reason I have this thing is for retro stuff. So we're gonna put this back over here, out of the way. Uh, and let me put this over here so we can see everything. Yeah, that works pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, there we go. And uh, we'll go ahead and pop this camera down just a little bit more right there. All right, and clean up just a tad. All right, here we go. And then we're going to take this and we're going to plug it into the side here. One way or another here. Let's see. There we go. Oh, got to get the right port. There we go. All right, so that's in. All right, let's see. Miss Law, let's see if we have been screaming in vain all evening long. I know. Uh, whew, here we go. Uh, at 99, it will seem stuck, but only seem. Okay, got it. Uh, it actually didn't. It was good to go. Uh, let's see. St. Joe says, I had 100 megabits on wire 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, that is good. Uh, and then we started uh, dev on the 128 on a pet and then moved to a Vax. Wow. So you actually started... Was it a super pet? Is that what you were using, Bill? Oh, by the way, Bill, I need to have a conversation with you sometime. I'm, I'm considering doing something um, and I wanted to reach out to you, but I'll, I'll reach out to you separately. But anyway, th th this just reminded me of a conversation I want to ask you about. So was the pet like a super pet that you were using at that point? Uh, or was it a, a pet that you had uh, decked out? Uh, but it seems like uh, super pets were being used for that and then moved to a Vax. Wow. And I love the 128, by the way. My favorite of all time was the 128, and there is one over there. So, um, but I digress. I will get into a convert. Oh, an 8032. Gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. That's a good pet. I've, I've actually got somebody on the lookout for one of those for me. So, or a super pet. Uh, so, all right. So, here we go. All right. So, we're going to. Uh, oh, it was in. Uh, we just put it to sleep. So, let me reboot. I may have to lock. I may have to. I may have to actually do the. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do the whole thing. Let me go ahead and do this. Uh, is this it? Uh, I don't want that. There we go. And we want to shut down. Okay. Uh, you're shutting down the computer. Yes, I, that's what I want to do. All right. Let's give this a shot here. 
and the CIAs can do 19200 baud each and someone combine them to make the 64 do whoa that is nice all right here we go moment of truth miss off let's find out if we kept you up all night for no reason uh, this is it if this doesn't work we're calling it a night everybody you're going to find another stream <laughs> but again thank you all for coming in though and joining me all right here we go boot i know i'm working on it there's our boot manager okay there it is all right here we go press and return okay so that's good that looks good here we go okay we're going to give it some time This is not good so far because this is, the, this is exactly what happened before where it just flashed at us. But I, I kind of want to just give it some time because you never know. Hey, Neil. Yep. Fingers crossed. All right. I am not getting a warm fuzzy. I don't think this is working for us, guys. Miss Loff, I appreciate the Rufus suggestion. We do our we do have a master boot record USB drive we're trying to boot from, but we're still getting the same little flashy cursor here. Now, and the other thing I would say too is the light. is not flashing here on the USB either. Remember how that was flashing? So it's not even accessing the USB drive. So I would say that this is a wash and did not work. All right, so anyway, well, you know what? We gave it a shot. We learned a lot for sure. I learned a lot about more about Windows, which is great. We learned a little bit more about this CyberMed right here, uh, which actually is, uh, which is uh, good for us. So, uh, again, we, we, we broke it open. We kind of know what's inside. So we're making progress. So maybe, maybe I will just leave this online. People may just want to pop in and check it out. So I'll put a, I'll put a thumbnail on there. I'll put something in the video description saying, well, you know, you can watch, but there's not a lot. I'll, I'll talk. I'll, I think I'll go in and put some, um, some chapter markers in there too, for folks too, that they want to get caught up. But yeah, see, it's still flashing. So here's, here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to turn this off. Not, I'm going to shut down. We're going to shut down. I'm just kind of giving you an update. I'm going to shut this down. I'm probably going to pull that SATA drive again. I'm going to find my SATA USB adapter somewhere. I'm going to see if I can get Linux installed on that SATA drive inside here and then reinstall it and see if we can do that. If we can't do that, then I might check with Jamie and we may uh, see if we can burn the BIOS, do something different with that. All else fails, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinking about pulling out this display and using it for something. But if I can't use it for anything else, uh, we're going to use this thing for something. So got that. So what's on store just for you guys that are in here? Uh, don't forget to check out the DC64 10 tips video I just released yesterday. It's pretty cool. There's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, Bill, I know you're probably not a huge fan of DC64, but there's some pretty cool things you can do with it. So I showed those yesterday. And then um, I've got another pretty cool video coming up that I'm working on. Uh, some of it I was just a little disappointed in, but you'll hear that in the video. That will probably release uh, next weekend. And then I really want to get back. I've, I do have a, um, a project on the Mega 65 I need to do. I finally have a replacement for the real time clock because when I got mine, it wasn't working. So on our next Sunday, is it next Sunday? Can I do it next Sunday? I'm hopeful next Sunday. I will do a live stream where, where we will install, and this will be a prepared one, not this hat ad hoc business, where we will, uh, I'll have an outline, everything prepared, and uh, we'll probably uh, plug in that RTC and run it through some tests and stuff. So that's kind of the plan. So, well, there you go. That's it. Thanks to everybody for joining. Uh, thank you to St. Joseph. Uh, thank you, Miss Law, for all of your help. Uh, again, my executive producer, uh, extraordinaire there. We had Mark in here. We had Neil hanging in here and we had a big surprise by Bill Hurd who popped in. Bill, thanks for popping in and thank you all for joining. I will get out of here. Happy Father's Day again to everybody 
And uh, again, thanks for joining and uh, have a great Sunday. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me. Chat with you guys later. See you online. See you on the Discord. Later, guys. Bye.